Okay, it's Roger Mud Fossil University. Going to make this very quick, quick, and it's very important. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma. 86 different types of these non-Hodgkin's lymphomas you can have. That means almost every part of your body can be, be, be invaded by this particular disease. And what is this particular disease? It attacks your lymph nodes. And what are your lymph nodes? And what are your lymph glands? And what are your lymph system? Well, it's a dump. It's the part of your body that dumps chemistry. And if it doesn't work correctly, that dump will invade your body. That's really what's going on here. And the same thing that happens is with your mucus, mucus, slimy, gooey mucus membranes, coats every membrane in your body and every single cell in your body, every single organ, every single tissue, every single tendon, every single muscle fiber is coated with a mucous membrane. And that is your immune system. That protects you. If that is damaged, you are damaged. What damages it? What protects it? Bacteria. Good bacteria. You have a set of bacteria that live in your body, thousands of them. They just said they found another thousand last month. That brings it to at least 11,000 different types. You are more than half of you isn't even you. It's bacteria. And they are in there to protect these membranes with goo so that they are flexible and that they can ward off these invaders. Well, what happens? These bacteria become invaded themselves. And who would invade them? Antibiotics. All right, or some other chemistry that's adverse to these little buggers that are in there just have thriving, having a good time, making mucus, just laying around saying, hey, you got anything to protect us, to, to do protecting there? Yeah, yeah, the guy ate some tamales. He's oh boy. All right, acids, salts, they keep them from invading your tissues. Your tissues cannot accept these toxic things that your body must have because it's a chemical factory. And I mean a sophisticated, extremely elegant, elaborate. 86 different types of non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. Cancers, you get cancer of your fingernails. I mean, you can get cancer of anything. It's unbelievable. But it's because every single tissue can be invaded because every single tissue is protected by a membrane. If it's not protected by a membrane, you will become chronically ill. Then you will get some kind of serious tissue problem. And your body reacts to that. They think your body is making the, the reaction happen. It's your body reacting to the thing that's invading it. And these things are microscopic little invasion areas. They don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden it shows up as a cancer is growing there. Well, that's the fighting back. That's what I'm taking from it. I have a whole ton of videos on this. I could be totally wrong, but I'm not telling anybody to go off and do anything they shouldn't do. However, I would say there's nothing wrong with having a little castor oil because that oils up. It's, it, it, it's going to do extremely good things for your cell membranes. And they say there's nothing wrong with it, so I'm not making any big claims it's going to help you, but I'd say it won't hurt you. Okay, a couple of situations here. I am making no claims whatsoever. I am a researcher. Secondly, I am making no money whatsoever, and I am not a copyright infringer. Now, this is a copyright protected material. I will be showing here and there, probably. I will credit the copyright owner, and I will never monetize this or infringe on their content. And some of this stuff is fabulously done. So let's just go right into this. Okay, this was op uploaded by Laura Santambrogio. Okay, and you can download it and view her publication. It's very nicely done. Now, what my contention is, is that membrane invasion causes most cancers. Now, non-Hodgkin's non, um, lymphoma has been linked to glycosate, and this is glycocalyx. 
and this is where they think the glycosate is causing the issue as what I understand I could be wrong but the, you know this is my interpretation now and then you get issues with this this is the lymphatic area and your lymph you get invasion of the lymph tissues and then the lymph nodes and then you get cancers non non Hodgkin's lymphoma cancers research in cancer and the invasion of tissues for quite some time and I have decided from my research that the bacteria that coats the niches that are in the cell membranes and these little pockets microvilli have the bacteria that creates the mucus that protects you listen to this well, as a matter of fact, I'll let myself say it, because I did say it before. This is my video that I put up here. Look at this. this. Right, this is a paper that goes back 20 years. Antimicrobial activity of nicotine against the spectrum of bacteria and fungal pathogens. They think, oh boy, we can use it to kill bacteria. All right, I'm not going to bother going any further with this. Where I'm going with this is nicotine kills bacteria. You're smoking in your throat, you're killing a bacteria in your throat that was protecting you. That's why it's giving you cancer. Now, there's all kind of other stuff in here that I have referenced and show all of these different things and there's all kinds of stuff in here about your immune system and how it, it functions and fights back and it's very, I like it. <laughs> it's a good, you know, it was a good video and it shows that we are being invaded and once you're invaded, you're invaded. Now, your tissues are there to protect you. Your mucous membranes are the barrier against you. You have, don't have those, you have no guardians at the gate. And the bigger the hole is, the worse it gets. Now, I worked with Gil Headley, who is an autopsy expert, extraordinarily good. And he, very insightful understanding of the deep structures of the tissues of these membranes. And he went to a conference recently in Berlin, Germany, and they said, yes, these are the pathways for invasions, these membranes, and it is, appears to be the bacteria. And we know this, you, you, you go, and they, even they were doing, this guy Gundry, Dr. Gundry, is, is, he's got a new book out that explains all of this in great detail. Very, very good guy. Um, now, I don't know if, if everything he's saying is exactly 100% right. I can't vouch for 100% of it, but I would say 99% of it that I saw was right. Now, I don't know about the glycosate connection, because I want to see these tissues be tested. Why can't you test them? You should be able to test them. You can see this kind of stuff 50 years, 100 years ago. I think we test them. All right, you should go up and read this because the lymph system, they haven't even been studying. They didn't pay any attention to it. It's no longer secondary to the blood vascular system. They said that the blood and lymphatic systems are the two major circulatory systems in our body. Although the blood system has been studied extensively, the lymphatic system has received much less scientific medical attention. Now, the human body has two major blah, 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 blah. structure and function. This is the important part. The lymphatic system is a linear network of lymphatic vessels, secondary lymphoid organs. Macroscopically, the blood vascular system is literally a circular system in which the blood leaves the heart and runs around in circles. Now, that's not what we're talking about. That is your blood system that runs. Now we're talking about your dump. The blood brings things around your body. The lymphatic system is a dump. Now, in contrast, the lymphatic system is a blunt-ended linear system in which tissue, fluids, cells, and large extracellular mo mo molecules, collectively called lymph, which is crap, are drained into the initial lymphatic capillary vessel that begin at the interstitial spaces of the tissues and organs. This is something that's in every single 
organ and molecule, every, everything in your body is coated with interstitium. They just finally discovered this. It's, 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 it's all where the fluids collect in between the tissues in your body. It's, it cleans them, then it dumps them back in. Well, if it's not getting cleaned correctly, or if the bacteria that's in there is not keeping all this nasty stuff from invading your tissues, you're in trouble. All right, so the interstitial spaces of these tissues and organs are transported to thicker collecting lymphatics, which are embedded with multiple lymph, lymph nodes and are eventually returned to the blood circulation through the thoracic or lymphatic duct that joins in the subclavian veins, which means that it's been cleaned and it runs back in there. Well, it's cleaned in this, this dump area. Right. Microscopically, whereas blood capillaries are lined by the innermost blood vascular inter endothelial cells, which are covered by the basement membranes, now listen to this, and then surrounded by smooth muscle-like parasites, parakites, lymphatic capillaries, which now we're talking about, are lined with a single layer, a single layer of partly overlapping lymphatic endothelial cells without being surrounded by the basement membrane. All right, so they are, they're subject to being damaged easily. And I'm sure there's bacteria in there that is, is creating this slime. Something creates a slime. Everywhere else the slime is created from bacteria. So what bacteria lives there? That's what I want to know. And secondarily to what bacteria lives there, there's over a thousand, or there's over 10,000 bacteria in your body. I would say there's 86 different, different um, diseases. There's probably 86 different bacteria, and one of them was bad. And that one there is the one that is causing that particular, you know, uh, area not to create any slime to keep the things from being invading you. That's my take of it. And this can be tested. This can certainly, absolutely be checked. And I would like to be part of this research. I don't have to be where anywhere special, but I'd like to oversee it. I'd like, you know, not oversee it like I'm in charge or anything, but I'd like to be part of it to say, you know, what are you guys doing? Well, how's this working? Why did you, you do that? How come this, you didn't do this? How come this? Well, how, why don't you try this? That's what I like. <laughs> I'm just a loud mouth in the corner. That's all I want to be. You see this? This is from the same stuff, septicemia. What is septicemia? Clinical name for blood poisoning by bacteria, which means that you're, the good bacteria is dead, the bacteria won and is now into your blood. It is the body's most extreme response to an infection. Sepsis that progresses to septic shock has a death rate as high as 50%, depending on the type of organism involved. Doesn't, it depends on what attacked you and what got through your defenses. Your defense, you are a toxic waste dump right, right now. You would be going to this right now if the membranes in your body broke down. This is what happens. That's exactly what happens. That's why deep punctures and so forth, you can get septicemia. My father-in-law died within 24 hours from this. He's fine. 24 hours, he's dead. Septicemia is a killer. What causes septicemia? Infections are most often associated with these internal infections. All right, so that's what I have to say.